we'll we'll do we'll probably do questions right a- after the the class. We'll do like a twenty thirty minutes. But we'll do it. So I'll I'll basically do some. How's the hearing, guys? Can everybody hear me well? How's yeah, the hearing we good. Great. The hearing good. Just want to make sure everybody can hear me well. So I understand this is a series on helping people get married, God willing. Um, you know, it's it's so important because we know that the matches are out there, the people are out there. It's just the connection seems to be the thing that's off. So it's very good that you guys are investing in, in it's not only motivation, it's really strategy. You really have to have strategy. Um, you know, you, you can hit a target that's not there. And it's so important that I, I, I'm so happy you guys are putting this together because it's really, you know, most of the people today, they're, they're busy looking for the one instead of becoming the one. And that's really the, the issue today. We're, we're looking, you know, we're looking for the one always, but we, we realize the real work really is becoming the one. And you'll realize that once you're married. You, you realize, wow, I didn't recognize marriage was going to be like this. I didn't recognize, I mean, the, the thing that we're running to, the, that, we, that we can't wait to get, and we, and we think that it's going to solve all, all our problems once we get married, we realize this is just a different, it's a different it's a different part of our lives, an, an amazing part of our lives. But I think God's preparing us, you know, when you're single, he's preparing you really to, to work on yourself and to recognize, you know, to get as much as information. You have a listen. I, I have five kids. You know, I, I get five hours of sleep and my time is literally, I got to be on, uh, there's no time in my life. And, you know, my kids bring me tremendous joy. My wife brings me tremendous joy, but it's definitely, it's definitely something that, requires me to give a lot. And the times that I expect in marriage is usually the times that I don't get. The times that I'm giving is usually when I get. So what basically today I want to talk about um, maybe seven, eight, nine concepts. We'll keep it short and then we'll keep, we'll give questions after and just some strategy because Rav Nachman clearly says, the Gemara says clearly that dot, everything is, is down to perspective. Everything is down to perspective. Everything is down to knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the less you'll suffer. Um, we're also going to talk about the, the four elements, the concept of the four elements. You see, a lot of times I'm, I'm meeting a lot of people, and they don't even know what, what the other side needs in the relationship. What, what are you made out of? For example, you, know, you, you go out with a, a person that's a fire sign, a Leo, and, 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 and the reason why we want, we want to know the person's nature, we want to put, know the person's main characteristics, whether it be earth, fire, water, and air, it's because we know how to tend to that person. And we know that if something is not doing right, maybe I'm just not doing it the right way instead of saying I'm taking, taking a personal. For example, if you go to, if, you have, if you're going out with a Leo, Leo is, is a Leo, a sign of Leo is fire. They're full of life. They're full of passion. You, know, you, you have to give a, you can bring them a gift, but it, it has to make sure that there's a huge package towards it. But you have to know that's the personality of the person. They're a large personality. So when you try to go against the personality sometimes, that's where usually you see a lot of communication issues with a lot of couples. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the four signs. Another topic that I want to talk about is, is obviously it's, it's, our job in life is really is to whatever situation that we have in our life that's, that's bothering us, that's the situation that we have to get up closer to our creator. And, and, and there's no question, I see that today, that people are very frustrated dating and people are, busy, uh, they're done playing games and there's so many games, just so many, so many games, people are playing games and, and I think we're living in a world that, you know, we live in a FOMO mentality, you know, maybe fear of missing out. Maybe this is maybe I'm maybe I'm missing out on this date, and there's another guy and there's another girl, and I think that's something that the Yetzirah is is going to always tell you. Listen, right now this this guy or this girl, it seemed perfect, but how do you know? How do you know? How do you know there's not a better one? You know, this is, you have to understand what is reality, and you have to also understand what is imagination. It's very important to understand. Thank God I was able to get married very quickly and because I know that this is always going to be a game. The Yetzirah's job is an evil inclination. The ego is to make you do what looks good. The soul does what is good. The ego wants to do what always looks good. So sometimes you're too busy focusing on 
you know, what looks good instead of really, you know, touching in to what is good with, with you. What, what, is, what is really the person I'm supposed to be dating? So you have to make that, because listen, without honesty, there's not really, you're not going to get any, any real breakthrough or any issue in life without honesty. That's basically. So you have to be careful to always say, is this girl going to, or is this girl guy going to make me look good? That's not always what is good. Remember, because what happens is if, if you marry somebody on a condition of something and that condition goes away, then you, you're out of luck and you're out of the game because you married somebody on a condition. So it's very important to understand that. Stop focusing on what looks good. Focus on what is good. What is good is what your soul really needs. Your soul needs to grow. Your soul needs to contribute. Your soul needs to become the second half of that person. You don't want to just focus on taking. And that's something that, unfortunately, social media and, and the world has gotten, in, uh, has gotten into that. We also need to, need to understand that dating and getting married, anything that involves any kind of spiritually good, anything that's spiritually good in life, anything that's beautiful in life, anything that's a beautiful rose, anything that has light, there has to be an equal amount of resistance. There has to be those negative thoughts. There has to be that, like we said many times, there has to be that, that prick on the rose. So sometimes what happens is, is we could be ready to go down the aisle. And next thing you know, these little pricks get in the way. And, and we start imagining that these obstacles become much bigger than they are. So we have to recognize, expect an obstacle. It's okay to have an obstacle. If something really, really was 100% perfect, then you really wouldn't, there would be no, you, you, then there would be no free will. You wouldn't get the reward. So it's very important we have to understand whenever you're dating, it's okay to have obstacles. It's okay to have issues. It's okay to have this situation. Don't make it bigger than it is. Sometimes people take a little thing. Oh, uh, the guy's uncle is Ashkenazi. <laughs> Deal breaker. I mean, I'm just giving you an example. Uh, or he's not Mashadi, he's not Prashadi, whatever. These things we, we, we make, we major in minor things sometimes, and I see that sometimes in dating, that people sometimes are majoring in minor things. And you have to expect that there's going to definitely be issues because nobody comes with free baggage, with no baggage. Everybody has baggage, and I'll tell you why. Where do we get this line from? The Gemara says something very beautiful. We do not appoint a king unless he has a checkered background. Let's remember that. That means the king of, the, of Kal Yisrael, the king of the Jews, was not appointed unless he had a checkered background. What is that telling you? You understand? Because in case, if he didn't have a checkered background, maybe he'd become egotistical. But we know that Hashem purposely made kings to purposely have imperfection and purposely have faults. Because he wanted to show you that don't become so arrogant. Look at your background. And I think this is something that also is going to hit home when you're dating, that sometimes you're going to see, sometimes you're going to see a checkered background and you have to recognize that that's part of, you know, that's part of the game and that's part of life. So very, very, very important to understand that everybody has some kind of checkered background. Don't make it bigger than it is. Another thing that I want to speak about is it's very important that we go into relationships. We don't bring up old relationships. We don't bring up old divorces. We don't bring up old baggage. When you want to go meet somebody, you don't want to hear a person's weight. You want, to, you want somebody fresh. You want somebody live. You want somebody upbeat. You don't want somebody that's talking about their past because it's very simple. If you're still stuck on the past, if, you, if the doors are still open in the past, then your partner is never going to say that you're really fully committed to you. So it's very important to put, there's a lot of old relationships that we need to, if they didn't work out, very simple, you won or you learn, but you, there's got to be some doors that have to be closed. Because I see many people, new doors are not opening for them because they're still stuck on the concept of acceptance in an old relationship. So if it didn't work out, that's up to your creator. It didn't work out. End of story. Close the door. New doors only come when you close old doors. This is very important. Also, we can't also make the assumption, because we were in a two-year relationship, that 
and you and it broke off and you're physically and mentally exhausted and you're burnt out, you can't say, oh my God, I don't have a head for another two years. Who says it's going to take another two years for you to find somebody else? Who says the other relationship is going to take two years? Like I said, I got married in 60 days. So sometimes we have so much, we have a story. We come to a relationship with a story and that story usually determines, unfortunately, your outcome. Because if I'm in a two-year relationship and I'm coming there with a the baggage of despair, oh my God, how, 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 I don't have a head to be in another relationship. Why don't you have a head to be in another relationship? What does this guy have to do with another guy? What does this girl have to do with another guy? So sometimes that baggage, that the only way to get rid of baggage and the only way to close doors, it's a famous world called faith. And recognizing that it was not meant to be, whatever happens, happens, and that's it. But don't go into new relationships with old doors open, because what happens is if you, you meet somebody new and your heart is not there, then it's very hard. It's very hard to, 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 to ever be present, because instead of being present, we're, we're too busy um, comparing that person to the other person. And obviously, it's not fair. And obviously, you're not going to get any kind of success if you're not present in the relationship. It's another common trend that I see with people. They're not, they're not, they're too, 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 they still have baggage in the past. You have to put an end to it, to put an end to the baggage, etc. For the men, the men in the relationship really have to take responsibility. It's something that I speak about a lot. The, the more you, the, it's really the man's job, like the Zohar says, to find the second half of his soulmate. It's the man's job. It's not the woman's job to look for him. The man really has to do the majority of the pulling. What happens is, is when you, start, when you become spiritual and you study Torah and you do God's will, then you're going to start wanting better things. Just like an example would be, if I start eating healthy, if I start ha- getting, having a better lifestyle in my life, I'm probably going to want to exercise and I'm probably going to eat better foods. I'm probably going to be more cautious about about healthier things. What happens is when you get too distracted, and specifically the man's major test is this area of sexual transmission, this extra areas of, you know, in this department. So this department has, has such an issue that it can, very, it can confuse you and it can make you want the wrong thing. Like you see a lot of today, you see intermarriage rates 60, 70% or 50, 60%. It's ridiculous. How could 50 to 60% of the, of, of Jews not want to marry it within. And again, I'm not judging anybody, but it's something that something's off. It's because spiritually I lost my spirituality. I lost my connection to Hashem. So it's very easy for me to to, to, to marry outside or even to date or even to have fun with this situation. So you have to understand something. When you get too spirit, when you get too physical on dates, that causes you to get cooled off. Not only will you not commit to the girl herself, but you're going to end up going for something much easier. You're going to end up going for something that's not really going to make you grow. You're going to end up going for, for a comfort girl, a girl that's going to tell you how great you are and a girl that's going to tell you you're the best. And, we're, and really, you're not going to grow there. So if the girl, ha- whatever doesn't challenge you, doesn't change you. So if you're dating somebody and they're not challenging you at all, you have a big problem. You have a big problem. You're dating a cheerleader where you have to be, met, you have to be dating a coach that has the aspect of a cheerleader, that they could be a coach and a cheerleader. But if you just want to go on a date and you want the other person to tell you how absolutely great you are, whatever doesn't challenge you doesn't change you. And that's really against growth. So what happens is is sometimes we go too much for trophy wives or we go for trophy husband. You have to look for the person that will help you get the trophy. Very different. Go for the person that will help you get the trophy. Specifically, the trophy is given to you by your creator. So that's another thing. What kind of person are you looking for? Are they, they need to challenge you specifically. They need to challenge you wherever you're weakened. My wife, there's no question, she challenges me tremendously. And she challenged me, and that's where the majority of my growth goes. If she just, if she just, told, if she just told me how... how oh. So that's another thing, guys. You have to look at a girl that's going to challenge you because whatever doesn't challenge you doesn't change you. People love comfort. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be called out on their, on their weaknesses. They take it personal. They call people abusive. So you can see the mindset today 
it's really not a growth mentality. It's really a comfort. I need to look good in front of others. That's why it's not working. Because ultimately, guys, guys and girls, obviously, this, this relationship has to be blessed by God. I mean, we need to understand that. The one who's going to put this together is your creator. When your creator sees how much you're going against your own nature, when your creator sees how much you're going against your own ego and you're doing the right thing, he's going to bless the marriage. Bottom line, he's going to give it to you. And sometimes you see this so much when you have situations where a couple marries another girl that has two kids or a kid, and you're like, oh, my God, did I settle for somebody with kids? Oh, my, this is all I can get? Just that, that concept of, of speaking that you're, you're going. So now not only are you helping the person out, but you're going to help them out with their kids. But now you're looking at it like, because I'm married to somebody with kids, that makes me, I couldn't get what I wanted, so this is a settlement. Again, the, 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 the mindset is, is, and the perspective is, is not the right thing. Because all the more so, again, I'm not saying you should go out with somebody with kids, but don't say because I married somebody with kids. My wife married me, I had two kids. Don't say because you have kids or you have, or you have situations from, from a divorce, something's wrong with you, et cetera. That's also, that's, a, that's also the judgment that we really have to remove. So this is, these are all things that, that, these are the blockages that are really stopping you from seeing the clarity in, in everything. And it's so important that we need to see that. And unfortunately, guys, you're not going to see this just, just on random dates. You're going to see this in prayer. In prayer, you should ask your creator, creator of the world, let me look for somebody that's going to please you. Let me look for somebody that's, that's going to make me grow spiritually, specifically where I'm weak at. Show me where my weaknesses are and help me get a girl to strengthen me. Now, if you pray for, like that and you pray that you pray for a, a soulmate that can help you get closer to God, I promise you, you're going to get a lot more results than just saying, oh, I need to get married and ready. I'm so tired and burnt out. I don't want to be alone. That's not a prayer. You just don't want to be alone. That's a different prayer. Where you go from your heart that says, creator of the world. I know... I know I have, I'm, I've not attracted the right one. Teach me what I need to do to attract the one. Show me my spiritual flaw. Show me what I need to do. And, and then you'll start getting better answers. It's very important that when you ask good questions, you, you, get, you get better answers. And, and again, these kind of classes, sometimes you know, I can talk to you about you know, very random things, but at the end of the day, I, I'm very result-oriented. You know, people speak to me with addictions. People speak to me with problems. I'm going to tell it to you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So those are the things that we need to understand, that it's all about perspective. It's all about thoughts and everything. Um, so these, these are the things. The Zohar says, this is from the Rebbe Roshash, a king without a queen, the Zohar says, is neither great nor a king, for it is the woman who empowers the man to conquer, and it is man who empowers the woman to penetrate and nurture. And then the man will learn from this woman that he too can reach within the others and provide nurture. And the woman will also know that she can conquer. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, ele you're supposed to elevate the other person. The other person, ha you're working on elevating the other person. That's exactly what the Zohar says. When I go into a relationship to elevate the other person, when I go in there and to give them what I, my strengths are, I'm almost, I'm, I'm basically, it's all soul exercises. This is how you attract the soul mate. But when I'm also, unfortunately, just going in there to want what I want, you know, many people ask me, do you have a guy that does this, 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 this? So they basically want me to bring, to introduce him to a guy and bring a toothbrush to, to, a, to a marriage. That's, that's not really what, we, what it's all about. It requires a lot of feel, it requires a lot of work, it requires a lot, a lot of everything. So that's another thing we need to really work on. We need to focus on attracting the one instead of... Now, let's say you do have all these good intentions. And let's say everything in your intentions is absolutely great. And you're doing this. And you really want to grow. And you're spiritual. And everything I just said about you, check. But now, you're praying like a victim. And sometimes maybe you lost the belief itself. Maybe you lost the belief itself that God is going to give you. Maybe you have the doubts in your head that maybe you lost it. and Maybe it's never going to happen. So that's something we need to work on. So I always tell people that anytime you want to escape in a situation, anytime you want to get into that next level, just like a person who's sick, 
in order for him to get healing, he really has to almost create like a placebo effect. He almost has to psych his mind out to walk around like he's already healed. Like imagine if we all walked around like this coronavirus is over. We'd be, we'd be completely happy. We would be in joy. We'd be not worried. We wouldn't have anxiety. If you ever want to get something in life, you have to vibrate at that same level that you want. So when you're, when you're dating and when you are looking to get married, don't ever walk around like a victim and don't ever walk around sad that you're not married. Very important. You have to walk around like you're already a bride, that it makes no difference to you if you get married or you don't get married. Because what happens is, is when you show a lack, it shows like there's injustice in heaven. And that what happens is when we show injustice, then we start resenting our creator. And that basically blocks faith. And that doesn't allow a person to get a, a, to get a salvation in that department. It's very, very important that, we, that we, we should do is we should already walk around buy bridal magazines, already pretend like you're already married, that it doesn't bother you. So when you do that and you go on a date, you're not going to be so nervous and say, oh my God, is he going to propose? Is she going to propose? How do you know it's a serious? There's so much, there's so much worry and anxiety on the date itself and so much prejudgment because you're so worried. Is this, am I wasting time? How do I know it's the right one? So you can't, you can't make a decision if you have like your mind running a thousand miles per hour. So you have to, look, what I do in, in life, is if I want a good deal, I pretend like the deal already happened. And I walk around with that happiness and the joy of the deal already happened. I already walk around with the elevated emotion. I know it's hard to do because your mind's telling you, what do you how could you be happy? Look what you're going through. Look at look at the nightmare you're going through. Look how long you're dating. But this is the Yetahara. You can you can rise over Yetahara by thinking greater than you than you feel and put yourself in a position where you're already walking around. Imagine if you walked around like you're married. You wouldn't walk, you would walk, you would have such fresh energy. You would have such light. You wouldn't walk around with anxiety, nervousness, and constant lacking. So that's one of the things we want to work on. Don't approach your creator with, with, a, with, a, with, with saying, okay, already, when are you going to fix this problem already for me? When are you going to break this toy already? How long, is, how long am I going to wait? That's not good because you're, it's a prayer that does not have simcha, a prayer that does not have a munah does not work at all. So it's very important. The approach that we have of our creator should never be an approach of sadness and, 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 and despair because pity parties don't attract better things. You're just, you're never going to make the, the right decision in that. The last thing I want to say, one more or two things. I don't know how much time we have, but the one more thing I want to say is, oh, what did I forget? What did I forget? Okay, I forgot that element. Let me, let me go back to the other thing I want to say. So back to this four element situation. So we know just, I want to talk about the compatibility. Sometimes we need to understand what our signs are. For example, I'm a water sign, I'm a Scorpio. My wife is a water sign, she's a Cancer. I'm not saying to get into horoscopes and, and, and predicting the future, but you can start recognizing from your spouse what their major needs are. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a book called The Four Questions that talks about this. Um, I have not read it, but I heard about the concept. But there is a concept when in the Kabbalah it talks about the four elements that we're all tied to a specific dominant element that basically guides our decision. For example, my wife is also, a, she's a cancer. She's a water sign. So she's very emotional. So for her, I have to make sure I make her number one and I, I'm always emotionally there for her. If I'm not emotionally there for her, I can get her the nicest things in the world. It would mean absolutely nothing because her main need is emotions. Her main need is that she needs to know that somebody loves me and somebody's there for me and somebody's emotionally tied to me. Once you're emotionally cut off, then the relationship doesn't mean, I mean, you could be the nicest guy. You could tell her whatever you want. But if you're not emotionally attached to her for a water sign, then you'll, you'll see a major disconnect. So if you're a guy that's going to yeshiva, you're a guy that's going in there, you're dating a girl, and you're like, you're not an emotional person. And she's very emotional. And you don't recognize that. You can lose the whole, you can lose the whole match because you're not, you're not understanding what she needs. You don't understand what her nature is. For example, you know, just like a customer, the number one thing you want to do in business or anything else is we want to build rapport. Rapport is being able to connect, the pers- connect to the person. Connect to the customer. If the customer speaks like this, you should speak like this. 
So it's very important to build that rapport. So water signs, for example, the advantages of water signs are they're very resilient. They're very spiritual. You know, sometimes a water sign that's very spiritual, if they're dating somebody that's not spiritual, it's like suffocating them. They can't survive in the, in the relationship. So, you know, what is spiritual, Scorpios and, and Cancer, the Spices, they're usually, they're usually very spiritual people. They're, they need water, they need emotion. They, they, they're into that stuff. You know, you could be a, an air sign and you're like, I don't care about that stuff. So that could be a turnoff for that person. That could be a complete turnoff for the person. So you need to understand what's the compatibility. There's a book, there's a great book called by Mordechai Weinberger that talks about the four elements. Um, it's called uh, Perfecting Relationships. Mordechai Weinberger is the name of the book. And he talks about each element and all that. For example, let's say you're dating an, an air sign. What are, the, what are the air signs? Air signs are very free, free-willed to people. They don't take things personal. They go with the flow. But they don't want to be held to a specific deadline. So if you tell them, listen, if, we don't, if you don't put a ring on me in three months, I'm not dating you. You know what's going to happen? He's going to feel trapped and he's going to leave. An air sign, you can't tell him what to do. He likes to be liberated. He doesn't like to be held up. He doesn't like to be choked. So if you're dating somebody and you're an aggressive person and they're very air and you don't see that, then the whole relationship can, the whole relationship can, 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 can not work out because you guys are coming from, you're viewing the world in two different areas. You know, let's take an earth sign. An earth sign is, their earth signs are very loyal. They're very steady. They're very, imagine an earth sign marrying a fire sign. The fire sign wants to go out. They want to go on vacation. They want, to, they want to live life. The earth sign is like, no, let's stay home and have dinner. You, you would choke that person. You would, you would kill the fire person. You would kill them. You would kill their energy. You would say, this guy is a burnout. He doesn't, he's not living me let, live my life. So it teaches you to be flexible. It teaches you to be, to use your, basically use the elements that we speak about and you have to tend your personality to the other person. Because what happens is, is that personality is not working with the other person's personality. It's going, to ru- it's going to ruin it. It's going to ruin it. And you're not going to be able to communicate properly because you guys are both, you're looking at one thing and you're looking at, oh, wow, spiritual prayer. Or you could look at a Torah class. Wow, what an amazing class. And you're like, oh, well, I don't need Torah. I like science. I'm not into that spiritual stuff. So you have to know what you're getting into also. Know what you're getting into in a relationship. Know the sign of the other person. Know the nature of the other person. Because that will help you connect to them. And that will help you understand where you need to, where you need to be flexible. Or where you can have weaknesses and things that you have to repair. Mastering relationships is the name of the book. Exactly. This is such an, I'm telling you, Mastering Relationships is, is such an unbelievable book. Because it teaches you everything about each sign. And it teaches you really how to connect to them. And see if this is for you. You know, I, sometimes a person, you know, is a fire sign. He can't handle being with an earth sign. It's, it's, there's no life. There's, but an earth sign loves an earth sign because they're more, you know, compatible and, and, and they don't like exciting things. And they're, they're not into uncertainty. They want everything certain. So you can, live, you can live a life that's very confusing and very, and you'll think my partner, wow, my partner doesn't do anything when I want. They're not, they're not natured like that. So those are the things that I really want to want to. I hope I hope it helps to give you guys a lot of a lot of um, tips today. And if you want, we can take some questions. But remember, everything comes back to perspective and dots. If you have dots, you're not missing anything. But if you're walking into a relationship and not working on it, not studying the other person, not understanding what they want, not understanding where they're coming from, how in the world can you relate to them, and how in the world can you build rapport? So of course, you're not into it. And it's so important that I can tell you, first, you have to study the relationship, understand the person, pray to God to say, Hashem, King of the world, help me know this person. What do I need to be? Now, I'm not saying be a permissive to the person, but you always want to go into relationships to try to grow. And in order to grow, you have to try to be the one to make the other one happier, et cetera. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So we have one question. And the question is, what do you answer the guy or the girl that you are dating that wants to know about your past relationships? Just keep it short. Keep it short. You don't have to read a Megillah. Say, you know, he's a great person. It just didn't work out. We had a spiritual issue. Just keep it short. You know why sometimes we, we 
the whole point is we don't want to get pity parties because all of a sudden you could open up to that person and next thing you know, they'll use that against you. So don't, don't give too much information. Uh, that's my opinion. My opinion, don't give too, too much information. Sometimes it looks good. Oh my God, he's available for me. But then now you're putting doubts in his head and he's going to use those against you. So again, everything, everything it, it, you know, I, I, I learned a lot from my partner. Just didn't work out. I'm very excited about a new relationship. I would say keep it short. Again, this is my opinion. You, you know, you can use these opinions. You cannot use these opinions. But I would say keep it super short. Remember, we want to go on a date like a job interview. If you go on a job interview and you see the things, oh, what happened to your last job? Oh, my God, you wouldn't. I can't tell you. They were horrible. They abused me. They didn't pay me overtime. They didn't do this to me. They didn't do that to me. I'm looking at that. I'm like, is this you're going to do this to the head, really? What are you going to do here? So I want to say, well, what happened? Why did you work for a year in that relationship? Well, it just didn't work out. They moved. They relocated. Okay, sounds good. You don't want to get to, you don't want to open up too much old wounds because you're going to get, sometimes you get judged and it's not necessary. Why, why open up, why open up old wounds? Just keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Remember, God recreates the world every day anyway. So what's the difference? What happened in the past? Um, we have another question. Um, what advice yes. do you have for dating for right now? I, I, you know, right now, I would say, you know, if you really connect with somebody, you don't have to worry about a big wedding. You don't have to worry about a big thing. You can really get a, a lot of clarity here. I mean, I, I, I'd recommend dating now because if you, if you connect spiritually, you connect spiritually. But if you're just connecting physically, you won't be able to connect spiritually. So if you have that spirit, that major connection, you know, communication, then remember, what do you think most marriages don't work out for? They, they don't work out for the communication. And what happens is, is you're really getting, you're, you're really getting involved in a, in the middle of a, uh, everybody's in chaos. So you want, you, you're meeting everybody on the same level. There's no judgment. Everybody's going through a tough time. And you also want to see what that partner does in a tough time. It's very important. You understand? You want to see what does this guy do when he when he goes through a tough time? Does he go smoke weed? Does he go, you know, do drugs? Or does, is he available? Is he emotionally available? Does he use spiritual techniques to to get close to God? What is he doing in chaos? How does he handle this? It's a great indication to see what kind of person that person is. I, I think it's a great idea. You, you're seeing everybody in their true colors. Okay. Uh, thank you. We have another question. What are the main things? Yes. A should look for in the person they are dating? I think it was, with men, you want to look for two things. You want to look for self-control and confidence. You want to look for a guy with self-control and confidence. Remember, the man represents the sun. He's supposed to give light to the moon. The moon represents the woman. And then once the man completes the sun, the sun, the moon gives back the light to the sun. You understand how it works? So... In a man, you want to look for a guy who's spiritual. You want to look for a person who's confident and has self-control. Because what happens is, I have, you know, I have a friend of mine that by mistake, he, he had an issue with the Shalom Bayit, and he threw an orange at his wife. <laughs> I know it's a pretty funny thing. But he's been hearing about oranges for the past 10 years. And he'll never forget about that orange that got thrown at. Every time she fights with him, you're going to throw another orange at me again? So when we lose control... We basically scare our spouses or we scare and we, we think we, they think that we're a threat and that scares them because people remember those kind of things 10 times worse. So it's very important to have self-control. How is this, how does he control? Does he control his speech? Is he very defensive every time you tell him something? Hey, what are we doing today? What did you do today at work? What do you care? Do you pay the bills? You don't want a person that's always very defensive and very, and has no confidence because he's always going to constantly answer and then you can't even have a conversation with him. So you want a person that has confidence and self-control, person that has wisdom, person that can help you receive. That's what I recommend in a, in a, in a, husband, a husband that takes responsibility. He has an issue in life, he takes responsibility. He doesn't run away from life. He zooms in, not zooms out. And a woman obviously is, you know, you want to, I, 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 I would say you want a girl that has a, the ability to have class. For me, class is very important. You know, a person has to be classy. Um, person has to be kind, that person has to be merciful, because remember, one of the biggest killers in marriages is resentment. So you would want, you would want a person that lets things go pretty quick, quickly. 
that they don't hold on to, you know, 25 years, every time you said something, they're holding on to a lot of anger. So somebody that's emotionally capable to be able to say, you know what, I know you're imperfect. I'm also imperfect. We're going to make mistakes. And when we do, let's forgive each other really quickly. Because one of the number one killers in marriage is resentment. So I would say recommend is somebody emotionally kind and merciful and obviously self-esteem. Because if they have self-esteem, they'll treat each other well. They'll treat themselves well, and they'll treat others well. But if they don't have self-esteem, what happens? They'll never treat themselves well, and they'll never treat other people well. Um, That's my opinion. Somebody can look for other things, obviously. How do you recommend someone working on their self-esteem? Very simple. First of all, you you have to recognize what destroys your self-esteem. Sometimes the things that destroy your self-esteem are previous relationships, are previous failures, are... Um, maybe lack of success in, in business or failures in business. So sometimes we, we take those failures in life, instead of learning from them, we take it personal. And then we say, we are the failure. So every time a person has low self-esteem, he's afraid to, to risk being hurt again. So he's not going to put an effort into something new because he doesn't want to be wrong again. So you build self-esteem by, re- by dealing with the past, by saying, you know what, I didn't fail, I learned. You know, I, I got divorced one time, it didn't work out, move on. Oh, I could say, you know, I got divorced, look at me, something's wrong with me, how do I, I'm gonna get married again, I'm probably gonna have to sell for anything because I'm not worthy enough. You see, this is what happens. You have to really look at the past and say, I learned from it. And you have to also, some, maybe some people, you know, people who got verbally abused or people got, had bad parents, um, and what happens is, is they took it personal and they said, you know what, my, my father didn't approve me, so I must not be good. So you have to recognize, um, you have to really recognize that that's not true. And that's just their opinion. Self-esteem is an opinion. It's not real. It's not reality. You can give yourself a better opinion. You can always change it by obviously putting effort and getting going in life. So it's very, very important to understand the self-esteem. Is, it's one of the most important, important things in life. Also, when you have no self-esteem, you're never going to take, make decisions and you're always going to doubt yourself because you're always going to say, I'm making the wrong decision every time. But that's really coming because you're afraid to learn and afraid to, to, to say, what are people going to think about me? So instead of focusing on what will they think, focus on what do I need to do next? So a lot of self-esteem is, is, is really dealing with the past, dealing with past opinions that people took personally. And they and they they say I'm that person. Uh, uh, okay. The next question is: Do you feel that a love language and the ideas regarding the elements and horoscope are similar, or are they unrelated? The the love love languages. What do you mean by that? Um, do you feel that a love language and the ideas regarding the elements and horoscope are similar, or are they unrelated? The- What do you mean? I, 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 I believe in the, in the, in, in, for example, I do believe in a person's, if a person's a water sign, I do believe that they have those characteristics that there's compa- Some people are more compatible with other people um, because of that bond. So I, w- I would, it's an added thing to help you instead of against you. I do believe in part of it. Yes, I do believe it. And it's in the Kabbalah also. The, the four elements and a person's characteristics, it's not, in the, it's not just a horoscope thing. It, this is in, in deeply mystical teaching. Um, I don't know if I, then, love languages. I don't understand. I don't understand the question. Love languages. I, I, would, I don't know. I, I couldn't understand that part of it. I think what you meant, uh, what she, what the person meant was, uh, like you said, that um, your wife. She, she, you said she's an emotional. Very person, emotional. So, Correct. Like Correct. there's different love languages, like, um, like yes, physical, yes, uh, like present. Yes. Like I think hundred percent, hundred percent. I do believe that absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, there's and then- no question about it. Some people listen. Some people, you know, they're happy. You come home with a with a with a with the roses because you. And other people doesn't bother. They don't need that. So as people they have different needs, and you have to recognize that. I have different needs, and another guy would have different needs. You know, I some things are more important to me than other things are important to me. You know. 
I don't care if she cooks for me. I'm, I care that she's, a, she's loyal to me and she's there for me in tough times. That's, my, that's what my needs are. Uh, the guy says, listen, yeah, I need to have dinner every night. I need to make sure there's, that there's certainty in my life and that, and that you're going to be a, that kind of provider for me. I don't need that. I guess so. The answer is absolutely yes. You have to really go in there to see how how you can make your spouse happy. Someone asked um, if you could repeat what the Zohar says about marriage. Yeah, I mean, the Zohar says a lot of things about marriage. First of all, the Zohar says that you can lose your soulmate. Specifically, a guy can lose his soulmate by having relationships with other women that are not his potential wife. And that could unfortunately cause him to lose his soulmate. That's one of the things. The Zohar says, I think the line that I said in the book, hold on a second. I'll give it to you right now. Give me a second. Give me a second. The Zohar says a king, with, this is also from the Rebbe, uh, the Rebbe Milobavitch. He says, a king without a queen, the Zohar says, is neither great nor a king. For it is a woman who empowers the man to conquer, and it's a man who empowers the woman to perpetuate nature. And the man will learn from the woman that he can also provide nurture, and also the woman will also learn to conquer. So it, it teaches you to both be a, elevate each other, not suppress. You see, in life, we could do two things. We can elevate, it can affect people and elevate them, or we can infect people and destroy them. <laughs> That's basically based on our midot. We have those two options. People affect them, they change their lives, or people destroy people's lives. And that, those are the things that you could, the Zohar is basically telling you that you have the, that potential to do both. Um, uh, the next question is, um, in terms of dating, how, do, how should one balance their parents' input with their own feelings? a tough question and i know it's a tough question in the persian community obviously um but unfortunately i've seen a lot of deals that, that have gone bad you have to be 100 percent respectful but that doesn't mean that that's 100 percent you know the, the torah tells you you have to cleave to your wife you have to cleave to your wife and you have to put your family number two bottom line wife is number one family is number two when we make the family number one and, and the wife number two you're going to have nothing but destruction in your life Nothing but problems because you're comparing your wife to the other. So you have to know there's a place for the parents and there's a place for the wife. You could take constructive input, but, it, you know, just because that person is not from the same town as you, it doesn't mean you have to recognize some of these decisions are only based on convenience and not the right thing. So you have to be respectful, but you shouldn't sometimes, you know, you could, that's a bit of a person be 40 years old listening to the wrong advice and, and he could be stuck in life. And I know many situations like that, unfortunately. So p people have to be a lot more flexible today and be more open-minded. Obviously, you can see what today is happening. Today, is, is, we're in a different world. What do you care if you're this, this, that? I mean, it's a different world today. I think now parents the definitely have to be more, more, more definitely have to be more open-minded. Absolutely. Um, another person asked, yeah. When do you know that he or she is your person? Again, you know, in my situation, I, you know, there's, there's a concept called good enough versus perfection. You could take a, a seven and turn it into a 10 when there's love. You understand? When there's love, when there's unity, when we're all working, you can have a good seven and become a 10. But if you, if you have no unity and you have no communication and you have nothing but egotistical, you can marry a 10 and it could be a two. So you need to understand, it's not that how do you know it's the right one. You make it the one. You can make it the one. It's not, I'm going to get a package that's the right one. If I pick package A, I pick, I'm, I'm perfectly set. If I pick package B, I made a huge mistake. There's no such thing. It's how you work, how you work that marriage. You have to make it. It's easy to fall in love not easy to stand in love. So it's by the effort of the person. Even the Zohar says that there's a concept called the piggyback soul. That means if, you, if you're with somebody who's not your original oh, soulmate, God, you marry them. It's like they, this. I'm sorry? If you marry somebody that 
maybe they were they, they were not your soulmate. The Zohar says that eventually, if you marry, if, if if the relationship is well and you have a strong relationship, they can get the original soul, the original spark from the original soulmate into that. So if you don't love the one you're with, if you love the one you're with, will be will end up becoming your soulmate. You understand? It could have been not your real soulmate that you married, but because you guys worked on each other and you created such a strong bond, they can get a spark of the original soulmate and she does become your soulmate. So it's never too late. Even if you screwed up and you said, I married the wrong person, that person could become and get a spark of your soulmate. Um, okay. We'll take a couple more questions and we'll judge. Someone Go asked, is there a difference between a Hebrew birthday and English in terms of signs? I, I think normally it's, it's to go with the, the, the English, the English birthday. But again, it's not to read your score. It's, it's to talk about compat compatibility, nature, you know, what, what's the nature of the person. So I would say English. I would focus on the English. I've asked this many questions and many people said English. Um, and someone but asked, there is, is, there is definitely, listen, there's definitely, there's definitely something to it. And it speaks about in the Kabbalah and the Zohar. Don't take this lightly. Definitely look into that person, look into the, the characteristic of that person. It makes a huge difference. Believe me, when I knew what my wife's needs were as a emotional, I, I, had, I, I catered all into that and it works out. And when I'm, when I'm, when the emotions are not there and I'm not emotionally there, you know, if I had a wife that was a, an air sign, she wouldn't care so much about the emotions because air signs are not so into the emotions. They go with the flow. They just go with the flow. It's a different type of relationship. Um, do you think it's smart to date someone with the same sign because both people may be lacking the same thing in their personality? So how would you uh, grow? Right. right, but you could see, for example, emotion, if two, two water signs marry each other, Right, so their issues is if, if they if they're both see water can go to water. So the the problem is is when water when water when people start resenting when water freezes. So just like emotions, you can hold resentment. So as long as the water flows and there's there's people speak about what their issues are, the problem begins when you're holding things in. When you're holding things in, you're holding resentment, then water can freeze. The next thing you know, you have two people that are emotional, they're frozen, and they don't want to speak to each other. <laughs> Because they have resentment. So any sign can be positive or negative. It just teaches you what the nature is of each person. Each sign has a nature that's a dominant, that could be positive or negative. For example, if I don't watch my emotions and I'm not careful, that's what takes things personal, my, I would walk around with a bad mood. I would walk around with resentment. And then even if my wife would tell me, go take this out, I would take it personal. So it's all about basically on, on working on yourself and and elevating yourself through that emotion. You understand? Each, every emotion can work positive or absolutely negative, but you at least know what you're dealing with. Let me know what I'm dealing with. You tell an air sign that, that, that's very free going and put them in a trap and tell them, you better be home by four o'clock. You better do this by six o'clock. You better be this at seven o'clock. They're going to resent you and they're going to do the opposite. You tell them seven o'clock, they'll be, they'll be here at 11 o'clock because they don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be trapped. So you have to be recognizing that this, this is the person I married. He's not punctual, but there's so many other good things about that person. But he's not going to be a punctual person. So don't expect him to be punctual and be upset every time he's not punctual. So this is where the resentment can come in because you can start resenting the person who's not punctual, but his nature is not to be punctual. And the more you try to force it, the, more he, the less he wants to do it. So it, it, teaches, you, it teaches you how to read people. Teaches you acceptance. Good. Any more questions? Yeah. How do you use positive affirmations in dating? I would basically, like I said, I, with the, with the way I just said it, act as if you are already married. Like feel, feel completely abundant. Like feel, feel like you're already abundant and like you're already you're already married like how would you walk around like that what you want to do is you our, our stages say one who's rich is one who's happy with what he has so when i feel rich already i end up attracting the one so it's more it's not i can use a powerful i can use affirmations but i'm not believing what i say 
it's really better to believe that you're already married. I know it's completely crazy to, to people think this, but I always tell people, act already, and it's a great trick. Pretend the deal worked already. Walk around like it's in the back, because what, is it, what destroys our vessels is worry, anxiety, and fear. That destroys you. That blocks your head. That makes you make the wrong decision. So we're trying to get people out of worry, anxiety, and fear by using an elevated emotion to think greater than they feel. Because if somebody goes into a date and they know that that girl is nervous or she's not married, they're going to say, well, why am I going to, I'm going to be the one that's uh, settling for this. It, it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't, it, you, the person is going to say, well, I don't want, people want what they can't have. When they know that she's nervous, she wants me to commit, then like, you know, I don't really want to commit now. Because it's the law of nature that people want what they can't have. The more, it's, the more they think that they're getting it easy, the less they want it. The more, they, the more it's harder for them to get it, the more they want it. Unfortunately, this is the, the games we play in life. Okay, um, this is our. This is going to be our last question. Um, okay, good. You, you, you'll ask the other ones for Jack and everybody else. <laughs> um, so, what do you think is the best way to let a person who you have dated uh, know that you're not interested in going out anymore? I mean, you know, just just tell them, tell them politely. Tell, be honest. Just say, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not feeling it right now. And just be honest. And say, listen, I don't think it's going to work out. I would just say, be honest. I don't believe in ghosting, because I, I would say very simple. This is the, this is the law of anything in life. Do exactly what you want, what you would want somebody else to do to you. If you you would want somebody to ghost you, don't ghost somebody else. And do exactly what somebody what you would want somebody else to do to you. Ask yourself, what would I want somebody to do? Come up with a question and then do it. And that usually works a thousand times. All right? Okay, thank you so much.